Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The next topic for today is weekly updates from the OEC Special Monitoring Mission to Ukraine. And I'll give the floor, now I give the floor to Mr. Alexander Hook, Principal Deputy Chief Monitor of the OEC Special Monitoring Mission to Ukraine. Dear friends, there was last week yet again deterioration in the security situation in eastern Ukraine. Last week, the OEC Special Monitoring Mission recorded almost 6,500 ceasefire violations, an almost 70% increase on the previous week. The increase in the number of recorded uses of proscribed weapons was even more pronounced. 317 last week compared to six the week before. These numbers, however, do not tell us the full story of what has been happening in eastern Ukraine. Whether we in the OEC Special Monitoring Mission report 500 or 5,000 ceasefire violations, the basic reality remains the same. The conflict continues. For most, of us, for most of us, there has now been over three years of news of conflict. Most of us, in the meantime, have gotten on with our daily lives. In eastern Ukraine, however, the past three and a half years have been more than just a daily cycle of news and late night TV chat shows. In the past three and a half years, have instead been a cycle of violence, part of ordinary people's daily life. Last week, even in a period of relative calm, the OEC Special Monitoring Mission reported on a man in Markivka injured by shrapnel with wounds to his left shoulder and right leg and to his back of his neck. He had been working as a taxi driver when a mortar round exploded close to him. An everyday occurrence in the lives of people in eastern Ukraine. Very far from reality for most of us. The OEC Special Monitoring Mission last week also observed ordinary people in eastern Ukraine without electricity, gas or running water. And everywhere people reduced to levels of desperation and dependency not seen elsewhere in Europe for decades. Dear friends, the OEC Special Monitoring Mission last week also observed 46 weapons in violation of agreed withdrawal lines. We also observed mines in numerous locations, including around Shastia. Also last week, the OEC SMM saw no progress towards the disengagement of forces and formations. Last week, we also noted recent extensive trenching in many areas along the contact line, suggesting readiness for more violence. It seems the sites are preparing for more violence rather than ending it. Dear friends, there is, at this moment, a strange disconnect. On the one hand, there is universal concern for the plight of the people of eastern Ukraine. Everyone is committed to ending the conflict that causes all this human tragedy. On the other hand, all the indications observed every day and night by the OEC Special Monitoring Mission suggest that very little is being done to stop this conflict. So long as disengagement remains stalled, so long as proscribed weapons remain in place, so long as mines are in the ground, and so long as preparation for more violence continues, violence will continue. The number of deaths and injuries will mount. 
people in eastern Ukraine will remain cold, impoverished and dependent. This is a disconnect between declared positions and agreements and reality. That people in positions of power need to urgently address. Dear friends, there is another more fundamental disconnect, perhaps feeding in the one faced by people in position of powers, one that all of us need to address. It is far too easy to dismiss the suffering in eastern Ukraine. For most of us, far removed from the conflict, to paraphrase a song that has much relevance this week, the violence is in our heads. It is in some distant place, some place far away, emotionally and politically. The sites indeed need to implement existing agreements. They must adhere fully to provisions governing withdrawal of weapons, disengagement of forces and formations, and the mining. But fundamentally, all of us must realize that Donbas is not a place apart. It is not only in our heads. It is real, with real people suffering day in, day out. Taxi drivers, grandmothers, children, all dying and being maimed in real streets, like the ones outside here, in real apartment blocks, like the one you live in, in fields like the ones in which you grow your crops. They are not just dying in our heads. Sometimes they are dying in kindergartens and schools like the ones you send your children to. Last year, the OEC Special Monitoring Mission confirmed the death or injury of over 40 children many of them killed or maimed for life from shrapnel as they played or went to school. Civilian casualties are more than statistics. They are parents, grandparents and children. They are coal miners, teachers and sometimes, as we saw in Makivka last week, taxi drivers. All of them enduring a conflict in its fourth year and judging by what the SMM saw last week, a conflict with no end in sight, or at least not in sight of people in positions of power. This tragedy, this continuing violence, is in our heads, but it's also in the daily lives of millions of people in this country millions of Ukrainian citizens. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hook. Dear colleagues, if you have questions, you're welcome to ask them. Good afternoon, uh, Alexander Zhurkova, Ukraine Forum. Yesterday, Ministry of uh, Thought and IDPs, uh, according to JCCCC, told that uh, the repairs uh, of the mobile network uh, has resumed and uh, they refer to you that these repairs are going on without security guarantees. Uh, can you confirm that the repairs are being held right now and whether any security guarantees were issued to your monitors to facilitate these repairs? Uh, thank you. Uh, indeed, I can confirm that in one of the repair sites uh, in the wider Shastia area, the OEC Special Monitoring Mission has yesterday and will continue today to facilitate and monitor the repair of communication infrastructure. Uh, for the work at that specific site, there were security guarantees issued both for the repair work itself but also for the work uh, of the SMM that is there to facilitate and monitor. The second repair site near Olenivka uh, has not yet begun to our knowledge. Uh, should we 
receive information, we would, as we do in the Shastia case, report on this, and that report will be available on our website uh, in Russian, Ukrainian, and English language. Thank you. Thank you. One more question. Crimean news, and uh, I have the following question. For the past uh, weeks, uh, it was reported uh, that that uh, that so-called DPR and LPR imposed uh, imposed some some ban uh, for teachers, uh, some uh, local government officials, uh, railway workers, uh, not to go to the government-controlled areas. Uh, I mean that uh, at separate checkpoints, uh, those people trying to get to the government-controlled areas are banned to go to those areas. Is it true? The OEC Special Monitoring Mission is aware of these reports. Uh, we are following up, and should we be able to verify any of these allegations, we would, as usual, report on them. Thank you. Dear colleagues, do you have more questions? No, oh, there is one more. One more question. Can you provide more detail information on the incident uh, that occurred yesterday where one of the SMM monitor died. A few words uh, about the uh, personnel, about this person and about the circumstances of this tragic incident. Uh, thank you. Uh, indeed, I can confirm that tragically yesterday uh, early morning a monitor, an international staff member, has died uh, after being involved in a traffic incident uh, in Kramatorsk. Um, we are currently in contact uh, with the family, the authorities and the respective delegation and we extend uh, our condolences uh, to uh, the family of the monitor and call upon you to respect the privacy of the family uh, in these difficult times. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hook. If uh, there is no more questions, we will end. Thank you.